Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to create our post policy and we're going to register that policy. But before I do the one hour, I would like to do it for the application. I just want to show you a couple of ways you can actually structure your post policy. Now let's start off with the first one. Right, so let's open our terminal. So PHP, let's say we've got to create a resource controller. All right, so the first one, PHP artisan make a controller. Let's go to the dash, make a folder called dash, and then add post controller in there. Now, if we add a dash M flag with a post model like this, what will happen is it will create a resource controller with all the restful methods inside our controller. All right, so let's press post. Okay, so let's quickly see if we can get that. So let's open it. Post controller, and you can see inside the dash folder right there. Let's go now. Inside the folder, you will see we've got the index, create, store, show, edit, update, and destroy. All right, so we've got all these methods in here. Now, in order to create a policy, basically, let's just open that again. All right, now, in order to create a policy for this controller. We can actually do a very handy thing in Laravel. So we can actually add PHP artisan make. We can say policy. Then what we can do is we can add a post policy like this, but we add the dash M flag as well when we add the post model. Now what this will do is we'll create basically a restful policy as well with the corresponding methods with the controller. So let's press enter and you'll see that policy is created. So let's quickly go to the policy. Uh, it's under app policies. You will see we've got our post policy in here. Now you see the view any that corresponds to basically our index method. The view here, this part right here, this correspond to the show method show method the create and update let's go to the create first the create is basically as the name says for the create and the store not that hand let's just do it like this store okay and for the update this one is as it says for the edit and the update Okay, and obviously the delete right here, this corresponds to basically the destroy right here. So what you can do is then you can add all the logic like you want. Let's say in this case, we want to say return if the user, so we can view this. We can just say anyone can view it or you can restrict it. Now in this case, we can just going to say return true because what will happen is anybody that comes to basically our index method, this one right here, all right, anyone can basically do that. Okay, so in order for the show method, we can just say a return. In this case, uh, a true as well. Let's just say true. So basically, anybody can view the post. But in a create method, we just want to make sure the user. Um, is admin okay or the user is a writer okay so that's basically but we have to put the return statement otherwise it's not going to return anything All right so that's kind of how we would set up the whole thing but now in this case so obviously with the update what we will do is we're just going to do a return and this is authored by just remember when we created our method, no, not this, the user, turn this, the user is, and in this case, it's the post. It's authored by, basically, pass in the user, or the user is admin. All right, you, get, you guys catch the drift. Right now, in order to make use of all these methods inside a RESTful controller, 
basically what we do is inside our post controller we can have a construct method so, so let's do a public function construct construct like this now what this does is in our construct method we can basically call on this policy that we created all right so what will happen is we can just say this authorize a resource all right just remember a resource controller has got all these methods like how i created this will only work okay if you have a resource controller so if you've got other different methods in here that's named something else then this might not work for you okay so i'm just going to say this dot authorize and basically what we're doing is we pass in the post class and the post is a string i think yeah like this okay so and obviously with the other middleware as well so we normally would have end this middleware up here okay so that's how you can be able to instead of actually inside your methods what we would normally have done we would have said this dot authorize like this and we bring in let's say the update like this or the create in this case it will be the create and then we obviously just pass in the post class like this okay because remember we don't we, when we store something we don't actually get the post model we just get the request but we're passing the post class in there to this part right there that will be received uh, let's go to let's do this create right here okay awesome stuff all right so let me just delete this Right, so I'm not going to make use of this. We're still going to get to the controllers and stuff, but I wanted to show this to you. So if you want to use this methods, all right. So let me just delete that. Okay, so all right. So let me do it how I would create this. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. If you um, just create this policy, so policy like this. Right, so let's quickly create our post policy. Let me go to my post policy. Right, so we've got our policy right here. So I'm basically just going to delete this. Right, so basically I'm going to create uh, two methods. Actually three. Let's start with the first one. The constant. And this one will be for the update. Okay, so that's going to call on the update. And the other one is going to be for... The delete or the delete method. Right now, the thing is, what I want to do is I want to authorize any admin users or super admin users before the whenever the policy is called. All right, so I want to give basically admins and super admins basically authorization to do whatever they want need to do or what they want to do all right so let's quickly do that now there's a function a method called in laravel that be able to help us and assist us with this one it's called the before so let's say we got our post controller let me just open a post controller anyone controller this one right here now in the so method uh, let's say this authorize I just put in a post policy this is just an example and we're just going to do the update and then we just pass in the post okay just imagine the post is there we receive the post because in the show method normally you would pass in the post post like this okay so just bear with me All right so normally this is what we would do All right so when this policy in the show method is called all right before that policy this update policy will run the before method will actually run first now in this case what we want to do is we want to make sure that the admin user is basically authorized on this application so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a return uh, we're going to need to pass in obviously the user okay and this is going to be a boolean 
And they, so basically what we do is we're going to return the user. Keep on saying this. The user and is admin. Or if the user is super admin. You haven't created that yet. So let me quickly create that. So let's just open up our user model. Let's open that. We've got a writer here. Where's that? I'm just going to create another one. Super. Super. I mean, that obviously that constant haven't been created yet. So let me just create them and just call it five and super admin. So let me just do that. All right. So basically, whenever any authorization is basically called whatever method inside it. So this is basically authorize the post policy, the update one. So the before one is the first one that will run because what that will mean is we will authorize this admin and the super admin to do anything inside this controller if this policy is called. Okay. So that's it. Right, so also what you can do in the perform method, let's say there's just certain users you don't want to do anything, and the perform method is quite handy. So you can say, I don't want any admins or super admins. You actually don't want to do this, but I just wanted to show you that you can actually specify who you actually don't want to do anything as well in your before method. Right, so let's quickly create these two methods. So public function. And the first one, this one will obviously be the update. And we're going to pass in the user, user, and we need to pass in the post as well. Okay, so let me just put in the post. And obviously, we have to make sure that we input this at the top as well. So just make sure right there. And this is going to return a Boolean. All right, and what we want to return is we want to make sure if this this post, all right, who can update the post? We want to make sure the post is authored by the user, all right? So the people that basically created the post, since we have different users, the writers that we're going to have, all right, we don't want any of the normal default users to be able to update the post. I only, and also the moderators. I don't want to let the moderators even update the post. It's only the admins and the writers that needs to be, be able to update the post. But I only want the person that actually created the post to update it with the admins. Okay, so that's our update one. So the next one that we have is delete. Right, and we're going to need to pass in the user and the user with the post as well. Right, and this is going to return a boolean. And we can just say return if the post is authored by the user. Okay, so that's the only people that's going to be able to delete the post. Obviously, the admins, could, whenever these methods, this uh, policies are called, in this case, this authorized update. So when that is called, basically, it will run this before. So it will say, okay, the user is admin, the user is super admin. They will automatically be authorized, and then they will check if the or is authorized by user. We could have done the same thing. We, instead of adding in the before, we could have said this or that. This basically comes down to the same thing, like this. So when you see this, it's actually showing it like this. All right. So the post is authored by the user or the user is admin or that. So instead of doing all of this, I actually just I'm actually making sure the admins and the super admins are authorized. Okay. So we're obviously going to use those policies once we start getting to the controllers and the methods and things like that. But for now, we just want to create the policy. All right. So we've got our policies all set up right there. All right. So the next step, let's finish up, is to actually register this policy. So in order to do that, we go to app. 
go to providers and we'll see under auth service provider right here if you guys can see remember we did the user policy now we're just going to add the post class like this and then we just bring in our post policy right so obviously as you can see it's imported at the top if you don't want to import it at the top just provide the full uh, space name path basically to do that so in what i'm meaning is just put in app models forward slash user right so you don't have, then you don't have to import it but for me this looks much nicer <laughs> so i prefer to do it like this all right so that's it for this one, guys. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.